Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to talk about amino acid structure. So the first thing I want you to know with amino acids is that they are the building blocks of proteins. So proteins are made up of these monomers called amino acids. Remember that monomers are the building blocks, the repeating units that make up polymers. Protein is a polymer. Their specific monomer that makes them up are the amino acids, and it is those amino acids that are our focus today. Now, an amino acid is a carbon with four attachments, and they have to be fairly specific. First of all, I want to talk to you about this carbon. This carbon that's in the center of these four attachments, sometimes it's called the center carbon, but it's more proper name is the alpha carbon. So I'm just going to put a little Greek letter alpha right there. That's the alpha carbon is the central carbon. And as I said, it has four attachments. Now, three of these are the same in all amino acids. So in all amino acids, these three groups are present. You've got the hydrogen, I'll put it here on top. An amino group, I'll put it right here. And a carboxyl group, I'll put it over here. Now I wanna point out a few things before we move on to the fourth group. So first of all, um, it is standard notation to write, sort of from left to right, the amino group on the left of the alpha carbon and the carboxyl group on the right of the alpha carbon. So you should go NCC, NCC, and that should be the correct order there. Um, sometimes the hydrogen's on the, the, on the bottom, but it's usually on the top, and the fourth group we talk about in a second is usually on the bottom, although you will occasionally see those switch. Um, but as long as you have the, the amino on the left and the carboxyl group on the right, that is the most correct way. And then most often you see the hydrogen on the top. So um, do keep in mind there are two carbons here and they're different. This one is the alpha carbon that everything is attached to and this is the carbon of the carboxylic acid. Um, so that carboxyl group or carboxylic acid group, I just want to point out here the name, right? This is the, I'm, I'm drawing for you here an amino acid and look at these groups, amino acid. This is actually where it gets its name, is the fact that it has an amino group and an acid group, a carboxylic acid group. And so that's our amino acid. So this is what every amino acid looks like, except for what's down here. Now the fourth component is the R group, okay? The R group. And the R group differs between amino acids. So between the different amino acids, things like glycine, asparagine, aspartate, um, serine, cysteine, etc. All of this is the same and it's the R group that changes. So the R groups can fall into four different categories. They can be nonpolar. So for example, if it's just a simple hydrogen or a methyl group, or here we have a more a, li a little bit more complicated branch carbon chain, these would make up glycine, alanine, valine, but those are all nonpolar. And I do want to point out that glycine, when the R group is an H, is the only time when you've got sort of um, two hydrogens here. Usually it's just one hydrogen and then a more complex R group, but that R group can be a hydrogen in the specific case of the amino acid glycine. Now the R group can also be polar. So in addition to being nonpolar, there being nonpolar possibilities, there are polar possibilities. So for example, we've got serine, um, cysteine, uh, I believe that's asparagine, um, and they are polar R groups. So they have polar characteristics. So just like the nonpolar ones would uh, be hydrophobic, for example, the polar ones are going to be hydrophilic. So they, these amino acids will take on the characteristics of their particular R group. They can also be acidic. So right here I have aspartate, also known as aspartic acid. This, this is the R group that you would see in this position for that amino acid. And the reason it's acidic is because when you drop that into a solution of water, this H plus right here can come off. And that, um, you know, we know that any 
any compound that increases the concentration of hydrogen ions in a solution as an acid. So that's what's happening right there. I also want to point out that you've got um, a carboxylic acid group that's part of every amino acid. There are a couple of amino acids that have an additional sort of a second carboxylic acid group that's part of their R group um, along with some other pieces. And then finally, in addition to nonpolar, polar, and acidic, you can probably guess this one, they can also be basic. For example, this one right here is basic, and it's basic because you've got this amino group on the end. Notice again, in an amino group, all uh, amino acids have that amino group to the left of that alpha carbon, but a few also can have amino groups, here's another one up here, um, as part of their R group. And so this one, it's, uh, it's basic because it can actually accept a proton and become positively charged. Uh, so this NH2 becomes NH3+, and anything that reduces the concentration of hydrogen ions in a solution um, by adding one onto this amino group, that makes it a base because it's um, a proton acceptor. So that's an example of a basic one. Now, um, I also want to show you how two amino acids join via something called a dehydration synthesis reaction. So what does this look like? Well, I'm going to just draw a basic amino acid right here. And when I say basic, I'm not talking about basic, I just mean general, a general, general structure of an amino acid. And I'm going to call this one, make its R group, I'm just going to call it R1, just to distinguish it from another one. And then I've got another one that I'm just going to draw generally here. And I'm going to call its R group R2, just to distinguish it from the R1 over here. So what happens when you put two of these together? How do they join together and form something called a peptide bond? Well, it's through something called a dehydration synthesis reaction. You actually have this OH from the carboxyl group of the first amino acid and one of these H's from the amino group of the second amino acid, these two things join together to form water. And so water is a product of this reaction. So now we've got this H and this OH and they've joined together to um, make water. I'm going to remove them here, and then a peptide bond forms right here between the carbon of the carboxyl group of the first amino acid and the nitrogen of the amino group of the second amino acid. And this right here is called a peptide bond. Now, it's also a covalent bond because electrons are shared, so it's just a, a particular type of, uh, of covalent bond. And then I mentioned earlier in this video about the NCC. That's also something you'll see repeating along the backbone of a protein. So with a polypeptide protein, um, another name for polypeptide, um, you'll see NCC, 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 and the bond that separates one NCC from another NCC, that's the peptide bond where two amino acids have joined together via that dehydration synthesis reaction called a dehydration reaction because a water molecule is kind of pulled out and is one of the products of the reaction. So if you are interested in these topics, I also encourage you to check out my video on the four levels of protein structure where you will hear um, quite a bit more about these R groups and how they interact to have a protein gain the correct structure, which allows it to carry out its correct functions. And I also have a separate video on dehydration reactions uh, and the, the flip side of that, um, the hydrolysis reaction, which is how you break a bond, like a peptide bond. I have a video on dehydration synthesis reactions and hydrolysis reactions. So please check those out. Thanks for watching Biology Professor, and I'll see you next time.